Oh my god, Ben's put out a video the day after a race. What's going on? Well, uh, it's not a race vlog, sorry to disappoint you. But uh, race vlogs took me like days to edit. I'm so busy right now, there's no time to do it. So what I've done is I've just got all the stages from the Enduro race I did at the weekend, Scottish Enduro at Lagan, and I'm just going to do what I did last year with uh, the Dunoon round and just, I'm just going to talk over them, talk you through it, talk you through my race, tell you what was going on in my head as it was happening. And this is a big one. They were, there were some big stages, so I've brewed myself up a cafeteria of coffee. If you want to grab yourself a beer, a tea, a drink or anything, I highly advise it. We got a big one. So yeah, I'll wait for you to go. You get, get what you need. Okay. Here we go. Let's shrink me down into the corner. Get the other video up. Okay. Ready to go. Stage one. Lagging SES. So it is so windy at the top of this stage and it's called He Made Me Do It. I don't know if one of them convinced the other to start it at the top of this hill, but this is like a walker's hill. It's not a bike track. But yeah, so windy down this first straight. You had to go fast, but keep the wheels on the ground. If your wheels took off, the wind just took them. Blind rises just committing to them. It was like we only rode it once. So it's like quite hard to remember the exact angles to go over them. So it was a little bit of caution to the uh, intense crosswind. So yeah, because it's a walker's path, it's quite narrow. It uh, doesn't have nice banks to it or anything. So yeah, you've got to watch out in these turns. And down here, just the way walker's paths develop, there's a lot of bushes running down the sides, like long grass and bushes. Oh, I nearly crash here. <laughs> um, so it's quite hard to see exactly where the track goes. So I'm kind of looking quite far ahead, trying to see like little patches and evidence of where the track's going. Keep it going, keep it going. So yeah, this is all just up in the open. Oh, and for those that are wondering how I'm filming this, GoPro Hero 7 mounted underneath my chin with a little fluffy wind cover over the top. Those who watch uh, McTrail Rider will be familiar with that setup. So now we're getting into the proper built mountain bike track, and this is brutal. It's just quite flat, really rocky, really rooty. So you're just on the pedals, fighting with the bike, trying to just keep things going here. Really drains the energy. Drained my energy, that's for sure. So just up here is the worst climb on this track. Loads of little sharp sniper, wet rocks and roots as well. Oh, wheel spin, I lost my speed. That really took it out of me. I was putting putting everything into that. So now I'm breathing hard and I'm not feeling composed on my bike anymore. I spend this next bit just breathing and trying to recover. Oh. Oh. This bit of the track is really good. It's got a nice bit of gradient to it. A few little berms, a few little catches. Really good. It might not look like it, but I'm backing off a little bit because I'm not feeling uh, I'm not feeling very fresh. So I know if I hit anything too hard, my body's going to kind of cave. I'm going to lose my line. Loads of roots here, so you've got to go below the roots below the roots, if you don't, you slip out. Oh, I am breathing now. Just come on, keep going, keep going. Yeah, I'm a total mess now. I can remember my arms and upper body just felt like it had no strength left. I think one of the main issues is I didn't warm up properly at the top. My legs were warm from riding up, but my upper body was cold. And when your upper body's cold, it's really strange. It's like 
you use up your energy reserves faster. Someone in the comments will, will know, someone will know why that happens. But if you do an exercise cold, you just get tired really quick. So this is oh, so tricky. Look at those rocks. Oh, I've got no composure. I just feel like I'm fighting with the bike, but I can't control it. Oh, into the tree. I think that was my only crash of the day. Not to give it away or anything. Got a little bit of a sore arm from it. <laughs> so now I'm just trying not to lose time. I feel like the the hunchback in Notre Dame here. My core is giving out. Sorry to be so pessimistic, but that was just how I was feeling on the track. <laughs> I was not feeling good. But no massive mistakes though, no big, big crashes. Just kept it going, kept it rolling. This last bit's really good, there's some amazing turns down here. Just keep it flowing, looking through the corners. Keep that speed going, I'm leaning with it. <laughs> Like, oh, over the drop, over the next one, oh, tight left hander, and finish. Such a good track. I think knowing it better, I should, I'd do better next time. So this one's cool. This is uh, the best track, I thought. No climbs, and for this one we do a, a one pound bet with uh, a few elite riders. And what that is, we all put a pound in, and whoever gets the fastest time on this stage wins the money. Such a cool track. So I'm just getting up to speed as quick as I can. So out of this next turn, I pedaled really hard and I felt my star ratchet slip. Do you hear that? So that, I've got a 54 tooth ratchet in there. It was an upgrade I put in into a DT Swiss 240 hub. And it says it has a maximum weight rating of rider of 240 pounds. No, 200 pounds. And I weigh 200 pounds and I put a lot of power through the pedals. So I actually sheared some of the teeth or just the edge off of some of the teeth there. Oh, this is such a good track. Look at these turns. That upper section is one of my favourite bits. Quick wiggle through the trees. Whoa! I almost lost my balance. And the dirt's really nice. There's been some moisture. But then it's also not rained in a while, so it's a little bit of tackiness. So down here, I was already thinking about this wide line we saw in practice that you had to swing right up and dive in really close to the tree because this corner's blown out. And I got it clean. Yes. A lot of people stalled there. High line. That corner was getting blown out. That was good. Because this track's so short, you're able to attack it the whole way. There's no conservation of energy here. Just all attack. So just at the bottom of this, there is a final right hand turn that was getting blown out in practice. So I knew I had to slow up for it, dive in, quick dab, made it through the line. Whew. Close one. That was good. I really enjoyed that stage. That was my favorite one. So stage three, I, I filmed a preview of this, which you can watch if you click up in the corner. Um, but it's a really, really good track, but it's got a few little punchy climbs in it, which just really take the sting out of my riding. But anyway, really fresh, lovely bit of track. Nice step down here, had to nose it in, and then you had to slow up so hard for this turn. Really tight. Oh, like, loads of people went straight on there, that's how tight it was. So this upper section, there's loads of loose turns. So I'm just trying to look ahead and try and spot if anything is blown out. Luckily, nothing was too bad. But you'd hate to come into one of those corners and find it's just gone. Dancing through those trees. Big 800 width bars just sneaking past. So now the first climb starts. So it's not a severe climb, but it's pretty choppy. And it's long enough that I felt like I couldn't stand and sprint the whole thing. So I put my seat up to about three quarters height. So I've got a little bit of room to move, but I can rest the legs a little bit. Whew. 
that I'm done. So back to descending now. So we traverse along and drop into what was the original track that was built in this hill. It was just called the Brown because the biking started here as a trail center on the other side. And then this was the only natural one. So it was the Brown one. Oh, close call there, blew the foot off. Super slippy into this, accidentally overturn. And I just did randomly did a new line on that side of the tree. Just got to roll the punches, go where you end up. So loads of little natural springs in the ground, putting moisture onto those rocks. Or it's just, oh, they're lethal, they're so slippy. Right now I am just trying to relax and just let the bike flow. I'm trying not to put in too much effort because I know last climb is coming up. So I'm trying to save a little bit, a little bit of energy. So right now I'm seat up and I'm just spinning, keeping the eyes up, trying not to stall because this climb kind of goes along, 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 along and it just gets steeper at the end. So I know I need to save a bit for that last punchy climb. So here it comes, not nearly there, <laughs> and it doesn't look like much, but it's enough that it just dr grinds you to halt. Here it is, like, come on, crunch down the gears, stamping on the pedals, keep going. <laughs> yeah, that ended me. So the last little bit's really good, nice and rocky, you can just let the bike skip and dance over it. Got to slow up for these turns and whew, off the brakes, carry the speed through them. Final little sprint, your legs are all wooden, you're just trying to ooh, keep it going. Whew. So remember from stage two where I said that uh, my freewheel crunched? Well, I was like, right, I don't want to go to this next stage with a crunch and freewheel. So I put the 18 tooth stock instead of the 54 tooth that I had in it. And uh, yeah, I hadn't used it before, so this was first time using it. And listen to how quiet it is on this next section. There's no buzz. I like that. It's silent. I think I'd like one of those silent hubs, actually. So there was a few moments where I didn't notice when I went to pedal. There was a little delay before it engaged, but it wasn't bad enough that it, I felt it affected me. And uh, for those that are wondering, see the signs at the side there, this is like the official trail center black descent. And it is a descent, but it's not a steep one. It's uh, quite a mellow gradient, but it is rocky. So you've got to focus on just keeping the eyes up, carrying the speed. Because when you don't have the gradient, you need to keep the speed. Tightest corner in the world. <laughs> so hard to get the bikes around that. Tricky turn. Oh, I didn't get that one very good. You need to get the brakes off early on that one to carry more speed out. So the next section is really good fun. It just follows the shape of the ground really nicely. Loads of little switchbacks. And they're the kind of ones that you've got to really commit to. Blind rise, pump down it. So here it's like, commit. Keep the weight centered, pump through. Look through the turn. And we've got a vicious rock garden coming up and you have to go as fast as you can at it to carry your speed across it. So here, I know it's coming up, so I'm sprint, 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 across the rock, sprint again. The faster you go into it, the faster you get through it. This is probably like the roughest bit of the black trail. At this point, probably a good two and a half minutes into this track, I'm I'm getting tired. I'm struggling, so I'm not going 100% effort everywhere. When I'm pedaling, it's more 70, 80% just to keep the speed going. 
and then I save my legs for a few key bits where I dump 100% effort, and this is one of them. Left-hander, and then crank it up and over, because it's really easy to stall on that rise. So you gotta just, yeah, dump the power into it. Anywhere I can, I'm just trying to sit down, chill, flow with the track. Not a whole lot of places to sit down though. This section's pretty wild. Big, steep compressions. Bang, bang, and you drop into a hole. Gotta take that. So I had a wee sneaky line here. Get nice and wide, and then cut across. And then I was planning on railing that and jumping over the rocks. Oh, I was too tired, <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> the best laid plans. So this is the last bit of trail center. Just trying to spin the legs. Deep breaths, getting ready for the next techie bit. And on my GoPro from the practice day before, I'd spotted what looked like a grassy line. I set you up wide for that bit, that was nice. And then the one other bit I remembered was a high line here, up above the tree. That was good. So I don't remember all of the tracks. It's impossible to remember everything, but you do try and remember a few key bits where you know you could either make up lots of time or if you screw it up, you could lose lots of time. And this next straight is my favorite bit of this track. Flat out, just skimming. I just like going fast. Last few bits. Just keep it going, keep it going. Final turn. Rail it, get on the gas, through the finish. Woohoo! Not bad, not bad. So, got through that quite peddly, but that is nothing. This next stage is violent. Yeah, man. So that's Lachlan Blair setting off in front of me. This is a really peddly 13 minute long stage. So I was like, I'll give him a 10 second gap and then chase him. And Luby Cannon was sneaking in behind me. Nine, you, you piss off. <laughs> so I knew I was gonna struggle with this. I'm not, I'm not that cardiovascularly fit. So I needed something to kind of like drag me on. So having Lachlan in front of me, it was like a little little bit of cheese dangling for me to chase. So uh, this, this stage is called Evil Grandad. And it's called that because Steve Bradley, one of the volunteers that helps build a lot of the tracks here, decided to do this track and this variation of this track, which in essence, is like 13 minutes of pedaling. <laughs> it's horrendous. This is the black climb and it, we're doing it backwards, we're doing it the wrong way. So it's quite flat, doesn't flow that well, there's no support in the corners because it's not designed to be ridden down. So I'm gonna speed up the bits, <laughs> speed up the boring bits. Because let's face it, you're not gonna wanna sit and watch for 13 minutes while I'm breathing out my bum. So yeah, my, my fitness is a wee bit of a running joke at these races. I used to train hard back in the day when I raced World Cups. Uh, I used to go to the gym and do road rides, interval training and all that. But when I stopped racing seriously, I kind of, I stopped. But I didn't enjoy it and I was like, no, I just want to enjoy my bikes. So yeah, sacked it in. To be honest, this right now is probably the best training session I'll do all year. Lachlan's right there. There's my block of cheese I'm chasing. Let's check the time gap. When he turns in, we'll uh, see if I've held that 10 second gap. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ooh, he's pulled about two seconds on me. That's good. That is good for me. I, I, Lachlan, I would expect to pull a lot more time out of me. So anyone that's ridden this trail, this is the lower red will know that this is awkward. It's nasty, steppy rocks, very jittery and hard to pedal along. This is the bit that kills me, because this is now a climb for a solid 
I mean, it feels like three minutes, but it's probably only a minute and a half. Last little switch back. Last bit of climb, come on. Dig deep, dig deep. Whoa. So this is where you would usually stop when you're actually riding it just for fun, but you can't stop. You've got to keep going. Got to click down the gears now and start sprinting. Is it down or up the gears? I always think of going down the cassette into the harder gears. But I think it goes one, two, three, four, eleven. So I guess it's I guess it's up the gears. I always get it back to front. I like to think of it as going down. But anyway, finally, I can give the legs a rest and actually coast some bits. But it's still not steep enough to fully recover. Gap it in. Gap the next bit. That was nice. It's really interesting. I find this kind of pedally physical track, I don't feel as sketchy or like bad or physically drained as I did on that stage one when it was like an all over body workout because it was really bumpy and wet and slippy and rooty. This, you've got moments where you can just chill. You can chill, you just let the bike roll. Whereas the other tracks, you feel like you can't chill. You've got to be switched on. You've got to be keeping control of the bike. So I find these kind of trail centre ones to be less draining actually. So down here there's lots of flat turns really loose and gravelly as well. The kind of turns you don't want to overshoot. Uh, you have to like back the speed right off. Like this one here, it's like brake, 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 brake. Off the brakes for the last little bit. If you overshoot them and wash out, you'd lose a load of time. Way more than you'd save by trying to rail them. A lot of people misjudge where you're supposed to get off the brakes for these type of turns. A lot of people think you're supposed to get off the brakes at the start. Common misconception. You actually want to be getting off the brakes just before the kind of slippiest, tightest part of the corner. but it's really fun and flowy. Loads of nice little crests, up and over, big berm, and a really severe ridge here, squash it. <laughs> I still landed to flat on that. I was lucky I had the strength left to take that impact. Nice bit of fire road into a headwind, and then we drop into the last bit of trail. This is the orange jumpy track. It's really nice when you're not hanging. These corners are all about just getting off the brakes, railing the turns. And the jumps at speed are quite small, you kind of squash them, but if you're taking a cruisy run at it, they're quite nice to kind of pop and float over them. So I find on tracks like this, I'll stand up and give them a few hard pedal strokes out the corners, and then sit down and just kind of spin the legs. It's good to get those hard pedal strokes out just as you come out the corners. Squash, scrub, all the people are watching, I better do something stylish. Massive pencil! <laughs> uh, it's hard to be stylish when you're so tired. Oh, penultimate straight, keep it going. Big long flat corner, don't lay it down, don't lay it down. On the gas, go on, to the finish. Keep going, go, 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 go. Oh, done. What a horrific stage. Steve Bradley, you are evil. <laughs> so, ah, racing done. I was quite pleased, I, I was happy with how I did. It wasn't my best result. On that last stage, I actually got beaten by about 50 seconds by one of the riders. I knew I wasn't going to do well on that pedally stuff.
I did. I won. I won at least one of the technical ones. I'm not going to tell you the overall result because I will be doing a race vlog at some point. So uh, if you enjoyed watching me suffer through that race, you can hit the like button. And if you thought it was horrendous, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. And stay tuned because I've got a really good video coming up, 29 inch wheels versus 650B wheels on downhill bike and then timed runs is really interesting. So stay tuned for that. And we've got the World Cup videos coming up, Cathro Vision, that's coming in a couple weeks. So if you don't want to miss them, you better subscribe. And I'll see you in those next videos. Cheers, don't forget, get the merch down the merch store. Pick yourself up, bikes are good. See ya. Let's roll. And it's frozen. Of course it's frozen. Why wouldn't it freeze? Right? <laughs> Play. Play. Play.